Welcome back everyone to our ACI security series. My name is Goran and I come to you from security and business group at Cisco. In this video we're going to showcase our new FTD fabric insertion device package. We had posted this recently on Cisco.com as our first release and plan on improving it very quickly here. This device package follows a hybrid model where we share the full configuration of our Firepower Next Gen firewall between security admin that can configure those intricate policies through our unified manager, FMC, and also network administrator that can use APIC with imported device package to orchestrate interfaces necessary to get traffic into the appliance and get that traffic attached to appropriate policy that security admin put in place. This device package can create our interfaces on virtual and physical FTD appliances. It can orchestrate the right mode of operation, create those security zones we need and attach them to existing uh, policy and rules. So let me give you a quick demo. Here I have a tenant with some EPGs. Out of these EPGs, we're going to work on web and app EPGs, which are in the same subnet, but uh, two different bridge domains. Our ASA5525 running FTD image is registered as a device in APIC here using our fabric insertion device package it's given a go through function type here's the credentials to log into that FMC uh, what interfaces are attached into the fabric to drive that traffic in what IP address and here is our unified manager FMC IP that we're going to be using for this device package we are using function profile that was based on template within FTD device package and here I had modified my access policy to be FTD uh, policy as you see here and a couple of rules. Here's our BVI interface that has this particular IP address that's in the subnet of the two endpoints and I can also name my security zones as you see here with app and web zones and interfaces as well can be named appropriately to match um, what our tenant uh, inspections are. So let's take a quick look at our FMC. We have our ASA5525 appliance that runs FTD. We can see its interfaces here and in terms of policies here's that access control policy I'm referencing in the device package that I want this service graph to use and I have one rule where I have predefined destination protocols I want to be used and set allow. I can in here go in and actually add additional NGIPS malware policies and any other intricate policies that are much easily done from FMC. So going back to APIC here, what we're going to do is create a service graph that's based on our device we looked at earlier and give that device an appropriate name that uses the device package and we'll select our configuration we looked at earlier. With transparent firewall packages here usually you have to match up which EPGs have or have not their Anycast gateway in place. In my case my second app EPG does not have an SVI in it so I'll set that appropriately and we are ready to apply through a wizard this particular configuration between web and app EPGs create an appropriate contract to go with it and here we have our pre-selected consumer provider items and I can also review the configuration, make sure that I don't have any required parameters here that I forgot to fill out. Once I click finish here, I want to make sure that I don't have any errors here under my tenant. And I will go back and in 
here in the top right window here what I'm doing is actually I'm tailing a log debug.log that's on APIC and in this particular directory that stores logs of the device package for FTD in this log when I gave it a go APIC showed me the configuration that I'm going to place on this FTD appliance that you see here in JSON and also it gave me device spec in terms of what FTD IP addresses or FMC IP addresses I'll be using. So while that is service graph is coming into place we're gonna let it uh, do its thing and we're gonna show you here the two endpoints are on the same subnet 10.1.0 and we want to establish connectivity through our FTD device. So right here I'm gonna start a ping and here I'm still waiting for things to get set in place. We'll take a look at our FMC in the meantime. Here I can see the message that a separate user I'm using for APIC to gain access into FMC is modifying my policy. I'll take a look at my device first. And here I can see that interfaces, sub-interfaces, have been created, properly named, and my IP address has been assigned to the BDI group. And under policies themselves, I can see security zones applied to my rule that I put in place, and the new rule was also created with the NI action. The zones are actually applied in there as well. <clears throat> so at this point, it looks like my configuration had been applied through FMC to my FTD and I can see that the connectivity had been established between the two devices and just to verify that I am seeing these events I can take a look at uh, uh, connection log here and see that I just open the HTTP connection and ICMP is shown within FMC to be coming from that device itself. So that is how APIC orchestrates this configuration on our device. In a similar fashion if I disable this service graph under the contract that we had created here I will remove it and submit it. We're gonna see APIC go to FMC to remove all of the configurations that are in place as well. So you can see that happening here on the top right. Our connectivity has gone away already because APIC had destroyed that service graph in the fabric, but FMC is going to catch up with all the appropriate configurations removed. So this is now happening on our device if we take a look at our policies here we can see that it's out of date on one of the devices already we can see everything cleaned up and if we take a look at our device it has all the interfaces also cleaned up under deployment here we see that APIC had told FMC to deploy this cleanup to our device as well so that is our demo of FTD device package Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.